Welcome to FAQ 11. My name is Ms. Hadi. I'm going to walk you through what is a skill drill for ancient world history and AP World History Modern. So the skills that we focus on in our classes come from the course exam description. I've shared that with you in a previous video. And there's two things linked in the PowerPoint that your, parent, your parents, your teachers will share on Google Classroom. One is a really deep explanation of the skill drill and the other one is a skill drill template. So if you click on these two links, you'll be able to open both of these things. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and open them because they're already open. So this is the one that you can make a copy of. So put file, make a copy, and then you know do the thing where you make a copy and save it to your computer. And then you can just type on here when you're doing your skill drill. There's always an explanation, again, of the tasks on the left-hand side and then a space for you to write on the right-hand side. Or you can make your own. You don't have to use this template. I'm not going to use this template right now because I'm going to be using this ex example, this deeper um, explanation, if you will, of the skill drill. So again, you have your name, date, period. And as you read the chapter, you're looking for things that you can apply these skills to, where, for example, you're looking for cause and effect in the reading in the chapter, and you see an example, and then you, you make a note of it. So you put the word causation on the left-hand side, and then you're going to have to do cause and effect. So for example, you give an example of what caused the historical development. That's the cause. Then you state what the historical development was. That's the HD. Then you give an example of what that led to. That's the effect. So for example, let's talk about animals going extinct. That's the historical development. What's a primary cause? Overhunting by humans. What's a secondary cause? Possible climate change. And then some effects here. Because animals are going extinct, there were no, Amer no horses in the Americas before Europeans brought them back over much later in the 1400s uh, and 1500s. And then the effect, no development of the wheel in the Americas because of lack of draft animals. So you would have, you know, you don't have to do it this complex or you could even add more complexity. You can do other causes, other effects. So, but the idea is you put the causation word on the left, you put your examples on the right, and it has to be in this order. The next thing you'll do is change in continuity. You can use symbols here, so you can put a triangle, which is the delta, it's a symbol for change, and then you can talk about something that changed that you read about in the book. It could be a religious system or belief, it could be a political uh, state that changed the way that it governed. Really emphasize what it was like before and what it was like after. I want you to do this because when you start writing essays, you're going to need to do that. So don't just say, oh, uh, they changed their religion. Well, what was it before and what did it change to? Really be clear on the before and after. And with a continuity, you could put a symbol of an, an infinity sign, which is an eight sideways, or make up your own symbol, whatever it, you, know, you want to put for yourself. And then talk about something continuing. And it doesn't have to continue in exactly the same way. Um, you can acknowledge that it changed slightly. For example, maybe you want to say that women continue to have less rights in society or that patriarchy continued. But you can do that but still acknowledge that there was some change. So you could say, although there was still a patriarchal system overall, men continue to have more uh, authority in the public sphere, women gained some uh, more rights to, I don't know, run a shop or uh, manage their family incomes or households or something like that. So it's okay to acknowledge that there are subtle or small changes but overall, something is continuing, okay? That's actually pretty pretty great if you can do that. The next category is compare contrast. Be careful here. In my class, I only want you comparing regions or something really large, like a large belief system or large economic system. Do not compare people. And this is because we're getting you ready for the AP test where you're going to be making large comparisons. You're usually not comparing a specific individuals from history. So when you compare... Uh, again, compare. There's a lot of categories to compare. You can compare uh, regions economically, politically, religiously, um, and, and you can also, you know, look for differences. And there are some examples given here below. That's pretty easy. You guys are pretty good at that. Just make sure you don't mess up with comparing people. Context is difficult to understand. This is something large that's affecting more than one place, and um, it can it, it it's it's. It, it could be something environmental. It could be something like, for example, a plague, um, like COVID-19 affecting multiple regions at once. And then, then we want a specific example of how that context is affecting a region. So you could say in America, you know, there are millions of cases and that's affecting travel and Americans' ability to travel. So context is something large that might be influencing a specific historical development. Okay, thank you for watching. I hope this helps.